talk a little bit about these strategies because Saul's mm -hmm. opening up with two Hellions and he's gonna follow it up with a four Widow Mind drop by the looks of it. Hellraiser is opening up with Phoenixes, but he's opening up Phoenix Robo, which almost gives me mm -hmm. the idea that he's worried about some very quick Cloaky Minds, or the Cloaky Boys as I like to call them, but there is no Armory, so I don't think he had to be super concerned about this. This can really only ever go into Phoenix Colossus, because if you would drop a Twilight <laughs> now, it's just kind of awkward, and it takes so long for Charge to finish up, so both of them have been quite blind. I gotta say, this is actually not easy to defend, even with Phoenix's Fear Dragon, because you don't mm -hmm. have that many lifts available. These are four mines, but let's see how Elris... Uh, this all? Oh, he only has two mines. Huh? What? Yeah, one of the mines is missing somewhere. It looks like the Phoenix takes, absorbs one of the hits, and a second Medivac loads up the third and fourth Widow Mine. Now, the Hellions are gonna come on forward, but it's not like the Widow Mine softened up any of the probes or anything like that. Like, Hellions are gonna have a hard time getting a lot of damage done. So far, we've seen a single probe killed in exchange for two Widow Mines, a Medivac, and two of the Hellions. But if you just look at the numbers and you don't take into consideration what has happened up to this point, Hellraise is at 50 probes, Soul's at 48 SCVs. That's good yeah. for Terran. Soul has double eBay finishing up. Hellraiser doesn't even have a forge. Soul is getting tanks, very good against Colossus. And on top of that, the third command center is finishing up while the third Nexus is now finishing up. It is really not that bad for Soul. And that is mm -hmm. only because Hellraiser decided to build the Robo Bay before he decided to expand. If Hellraiser would have done all the same things, but then instead of taking the extra gases and the Robo Bay before this uh, Nexus, but he would have taken the Nexus first, then I think it'd be real bad for mm -hmm. Soul. Now it's actually perfectly playable, I think. So Hellraiser seems to be gearing up for uh, these traditional Phoenix, Colossus, Couple Zealots, and a Narcom attack. If Soul spreads himself thin over four bases, maybe there is an opportunity. But since the ghosts are already out, these Arcos uh -oh. are not that impactful. And these Phoenixes, two of them going down and one of them very low in HP. I really don't hate it for Soul as long as he knows that <laughs> this random attack is coming. And look at Hellraiser, Fleet Beacon, second Stargate. Might get oh to boy. carry a disruptor action here. Yeah, all in all, even though, yes, we did have a bit of that harassment in the early stages of the game, and the Phoenix have been kind of poking and prodding here and there, both of these players have not really lost all that much. It's been very much focused on just macro, and we're getting even more doubling down into just later stage gameplay. And uh, a couple more Phoenix are going down over there. But at the end of the day, both these players are very content to sit back, get up their fourth or even, you know, potentially fifth space now, and just... Yeah, say I'm better at late game than you are. I'm actually a bit concerned for Hellraiser because he has 93, 94 probes at this point, which means that his <laughs> maxed out army is really not going to be very good. It's going to be 106 supply at best. And on top of that, he's now getting Tempest. I thought he would maybe go Carrius first, but apparently he wants to go Tempest. I, I actually think that if Sol just controls his army properly, there are some extra starports going down, by the way. I really think there's a lot of potential in this Terran army. And I think Hellraiser is going to have a hard time not winning a fight, because I really don't see that ever happening. But I even mm -hmm. see him having a hard time just trading out. Mm, it's going to be very difficult to find reasonable ways to trade out, for sure. Uh, we're going to see a couple more gateways being thrown down. Double forge on top of the one forge that I think he already has. So maybe thinking about getting a handful more upgrades, or maybe actually just forgetting that he already had a forge. So going full soul and building four command centers at once. Despite the fact that nothing has happened in minutes in this game, Soul does manage to squeeze eight Marines to the other side of the map. He is going <laughs> to fly away. Obviously, these Metafacts should eventually get picked off because the Phoenix count is still high. I uh, I mentioned Battle Cruises in the beginning of the game. I was <laughs> At first, I was joking, but I'm starting to believe that it's a real possibility we could get Battle Cruises. There is the Fusion Core, could obviously be for Liberators and Advanced Ballistics, but I really think there is a solid chance with those four extra starports going down that Soul is going to make some battle cruises this game. I'll we'll have to wait and see. This is a, a, it's kind of a funny army for Hellraiser, which I mean absolutely makes sense, but it's such a small army in terms of surface area. It's, it's actually like the easiest army ever to EMP. If you ever get one EMP off, it's probably going to hit the entire army. That is a little bit scary to me, Kev. That sounds like every EMP to me, Fear Dragon. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, with well. The, 
With yeah. the enhanced shockwaves, of course. Without, sure, you know, I, I can see someone miss. I see the muscle in miss. That's about it. <laughs> With the upgrades, uh, I think one EMP covers it up. We are going to see some good old beasties and probably a lot of Yamato cannons. Hashtag blessed. Uh, nice EMP on the Nexus is going to remove the ability to recall over here. So it's no longer an option. Hellraiser just going to have to put up in with uh, losing that base. But at this point, this is where I feel like all of the bases that have been taken are the bases that you're like, yeah, okay, I can take these. As soon as these like bottom and top center bases are where things start to get a little bit trickier. All of these center bases are a lot harder to keep open. I'm a lot more worried about Hellraiser's win condition. It really feels that Hellraiser is used to Terran players that lose their patience and attack mm -hmm. into his robot units and his target units and cannons and static defenses, but Saul ain't doing that. This is what Saul loves <laughs> to do. So Hellraiser really needs to start coming up with a plan to potentially win this. So far, it's not quite working out. This fight maybe is not going that bad as the Vikings are starting to run quite low in HP. Nice micro dado by Saul. Saul's got one BC that he teleported to the bottom right side. <laughs> like we are five minutes into a Terran versus Zerg. Oh, Okay, there's there are two pylons that are powering, I think, close to like nine gateways. I think just get that pylon. Just get that pylon. Oh man, no, the tempests are gonna come home. Yeah, I don't think he's too concerned about powered gateways at this point. He's like, Hellraiser, if you want to make gateway units, go ahead and make gateway <laughs> units. But like, Saul is obviously not planning on winning this game in the next minute. This is not yeah. like, oh, let's get one attack and land an EMP and lose all my Vikings and battle cruisers. No, the longer this goes, the better it is for Terran in general, because they can obviously still mine a lot with the orbitals and they can spam mules. So Saul can eventually get like 150 army supply plus, while Hellraiser is never going to have an army that big. And even if he does, it won't scale as well as the maxed out Terran army. Well, Hellraiser is breaking through quite a few of these units. The Interceptor is absorbing a lot of the anti-air attacks over here. He's going to have to back off eventually. The Vikings starting to come forward. Sniping off one or two of the carriers, and I believe an Archon or two also ends up dying over there. But uh, the banks that were actually a little bit more in favor of Soul at the beginning of that fight starting to start to favor Hellraiser a tiny bit more again. Both these players have actually been depleting their banks a little bit more frequently than I would have thought. I actually think at this point, like it's very important to keep a close eye on what the army composition of Soul is like. At this mm -hmm. point, it's six Vikings, twelve BCs, and eleven Ghosts. I actually think the best army you can make against this is maxed out maxed out on Tempest. I actually think just pure mm -hmm. Tempest is probably the best thing you can do. Carriers really are not as good as Tempest are against battle cruisers because the interceptors just mm -hmm. don't deal enough damage. On top of that, they obviously build very slow, they move slow. I honestly say at this point just hold the Tempest button down and make nothing but Tempest and hope that Soul makes a boo-boo with his BCs. Yeah, I don't hate that idea as a massive set of EMPs come off on all of the carriers over here. Yamato's going to be especially effective now, but all the ghosts end up dying as well. Oh no, Sol ends up losing all of his ghosts. It might end up losing a handful of the battle cruisers as well, as even the Tempests start coming on in. These are some really fantastic trades to start off with for Hellraiser, but now that the whole entire fleet has arrived, oh. a couple of Yamatos do take their tax over here. I mean, a really good set of trades at the end of the day, though, still for Hellraiser. Yeah, that was really good. Soul just took that fight a little too soon. It was kind of pointless because the PF was already dead. But then first <laughs> he fought with like two battle cruisers, six Vikings, exposed all the ghosts. And then just much, much later, after all the ghosts were dead, most of the Vikings were gone, all the turrets were dead. That's when the additional BC showed up. It was just a little bit too late. Good job by Hellraiser realizing that he had done good enough and it's time to disengage. That was honestly very good for our Ukrainian Protoss, but I do think that Thor will have another chance at a similar fight and just handle everything a whole lot better. Yeah, handful of stalkers that were warped in at the end of the fight are... Uh, I actually do like these kind of moves, where it's just the battle cruisers, like, by no way, shape, or form do the battle cruisers ever want to have to teleport forward to help deal with the stalkers, but uh, losing all the stalkers like this is... Uh, I mean, it, it's bound to happen. Battle cruisers can move actually pretty quickly, but I like that. Yeah, Hellraiser's still finding opportunities to just clean up missile turrets and stuff. Finding ways to just chip around at these units that do take some time to move around the map is nice. Next time it's 14 Vikings, 12 battle cruisers, and eight ghosts. As we do have another nuke landing at some of the static defense in the top right side. 
I do think that Thor realized where he messed up and that he can just take a much better fight in the future. If you fight an army that's maxed out, you probably don't want to engage with like 15% of your forces, then 20%, and then the rest. <laughs> like that was just not yeah. an optimal way to go about it. Uh, absolutely. I think uh, no disagreements here. We got 15 more missile turrets finishing on up. We have flux veins coming on out just in case he ever needs some of those void rays observer speed so that they can run into the missile turrets faster to die. And uh, yeah, we got uh, potentially another little fight going to break out over here. Some nukes are coming forward and not sure that the ghost has actually been spotted, but he should back off just because the army's over here, right? Right? Yes. Right, Kev? Right, Kev? Oh, right, Kev? Kev? are hovering right above the red dot, and they do take a lot of damage, but in the end, they won't go down. I'm... Oh, my God. It's actually kind of bad, though, because a lot of these tempers are now permanently damaged, and that means that they yeah. are going to die a little bit quicker in future fights. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, I mean... It just makes it even easier, right? I, I'm i really afraid that oh, they're going to take damage. Oh, to just get Yamato and on out. And the Battlecruiser is teleporting right on top of all the carriers and the Tempest. Here come all the massive Yamatos. It looks like there just might be too many Battlecruisers and Vikings, but the Stalker reinforcements oh, might be able to actually help save the day here. That's actually pretty sick. 23 gateways on the map for Hellraiser. He's going to warp in 23 Stalkers, and he's going to push all these Battlecruisers back. I'm going to say so his Viking micro was a little bit derpy there. They were either shooting at interceptors or they were just moving around. They were definitely not right clicked on Stargate units. But if it wasn't for those 23 gateways, that would have been a bad fight for Hellraiser. I got to say though, a Ukrainian Protoss is definitely hanging in there and holding his own. We finally have Storm coming as well, Kev. And uh, it might be a very fitting time for it because <laughs> That Stalker reinforcement is very mineral intensive. It's actually cost quite a few minerals to warp in 23 Stalkers. But the gas count, the gas count is absolutely still there for Hellraiser. Remember, even, even the carriers actually end up using quite a few minerals just to replace the interceptors and everything. Uh, having some gas available to just warp in a bunch of high Templars for both Storm and Archons, I really like that idea. Goes going forward, landing another EMP. These Tempests are very... Oh, boy. Yeah, Vikings just fight. I feel like often the Vikings are just flying around. They ain't actually mm -hmm. fighting. I'm not sure if Hellraiser should really stick around here because he just lost the majority of his Tempest. And it feels like his actual army is very tiny. He is going to build six more Tempests after losing some supply. I think it's the correct choice. What I would like to see, Fair Dragon, is maybe a wall of shield batteries in the center of the map. Uh, mm. Instead of like uh. only fighting into the static defense of Soul, maybe Hellraiser can give himself some static defenses to fall back to as well. I actually really like that idea, especially since a lot of the time the way that Soul is finding the trades is he is going for big EMP and then three second delay as the Yamato goes off. And if you have some of the, a bunch of those shield batteries there, at least some of the Tempests will start regenerating their uh, their shields, and they might not just get one shot or take as much damage from the Yamatos. So I think that could definitely pair really well together. There are 72 missile turrets on the map. Now there's about to be some more, Kev. Yes, there I, are. I love that, yes, the way also that he's sacrificing some of the SCVs is he's just using them on the front lines to build missile turrets. <laughs> like... The, the SCVs are actually gradually trading on out. I love how in the bottom side we do have a little bit of a cannon versus missile turret standoff happening. <laughs> a couple of random pilots. I feel like you can be a little more aggressive with your cannons. Maybe the cannons can just take down. We do have a little update of some of the things that have been happening. It seems like Lambo did end up losing his last series against Cerro. Seems like Marine Lord won his series. So I guess it all comes down to what's happening between Milky Cow and... Don't. As we have a decent nuke landing on a couple of probes in the top right side. Yeah, definitely not too shabby there. Uh, and yeah, Milky Cow potentially might still be in it, depending on the uh, the results of this series, which is still in game one. So a lot still to decide over here. Ghost going to be uh, able to land another one of those nukes, but the big battles where all of their attention is focused on. EMPs came out on the entire Sky Toss army, and Yamato's going to follow it up behind it. Looks at the end of the day, Hellraiser's bank is completely depleted in terms of minerals. And Sol, well, he's going to be uh, bleeding out a few battlecruisers on the retreat here. 
Yep, Carrier's get EMP'd again. Stalkers are really just not good enough in these kinds of fights. The Vikings were not participating in the fight for a while. Now, finally, the Vikings do go forward. I would like to see Soul be a little more adventurous with them, but it seems like Soul just looks at this and is like, you know what, as long as I'm in no danger of dying, I think I will eventually win because this is costing you a little more than it's costing me. Which has not mm. totally been true so far, but if you look at the armies that they're working with right now, it definitely feels that Soul's army is just better than you know, Stalkers and Archons. I mean, you, does that really you know, win a war after 30 minutes? Kev, I am looking at the gas available for Soul. So I see the bottom left-hand side has like 600, 700 gas. I see the center-ish like high yield base has like 200 gas. So that's like maybe a thousand gas. And the top center is the one that has the most gas. That has like, I want to say another like 2,500 gas between them. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of it. Soul's gas bank is already depleted as well. Uh, literally just like in terms of Hellraiser's current gas available in his bank, he already has about as much as Soul has left on the map. Yeah, Soul can take the top right side though. There is still 4,000 gas available in that base. And looking at where these turrets are going, I have a hard time believing that Hellraiser can eventually prevent Soul from taking that base. As the armies mm -hmm. are getting close to each other again, the ghost count is at eight. EMPs can really melt this army, and a couple of big EMPs do go down Yamato's land as well. And Hellraiser just dropped 50 supply, and I don't know if you saw it, Fear Dragon. <laughs> I blinked, and it was gone. As the power of Yamato's and EMPs, another nuke also going to be able to zone out this army. And yeah, if these missile turrets go up, Hellraiser is completely cut off from that top right hand base. That there's going to be a very, very difficult fight to try and get up over there to actually effectively defend that area. I think I just saw the shadow of the nuke coming forward, mm -hmm. but get canceled at the last second. That was impressive. Yeah, Saw sure. so actually did that two or three times there and moving forward as Ooh, well. This Archon. is a very weird fight for Archons and uh, Stalkers. I don't really see this having a happy ending for the Protoss. And looking at these supplies, it definitely is not a happy ending. Stalkers just do not oh. stand a chance against this many battle cruisers. There are 16 BCs on the map. There are 24 Stalkers. Well, that's not a very fair fight. And, and I kind of feel like this game is just going to end as a candle that, I don't know, <laughs> running out. Because I don't see a way for Hellraiser yeah. to win a fight. How is he going to win a fight? He's, I think he's just bled out too much at this point, and there's just not any avail. I mean, the Archons can't get close enough to actually do the AoE damage without just getting immediately evaporated by EMPs plus the battle cruisers. Vikings now land because there's not a Sky Toss army to fight anymore. Soul, more than double the supply of Hellraiser. Has he just gradually bled him out over the course of 30 minutes? Oh, has just grinded his way to victory here in game on 32 minutes and it feels like we've been waiting 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 for the big fight but the big fights they kind of took place right in front of our eyes so land a few yamatas land a few emps and as a protos these kinds of games are a bit deceiving because you think you're rich you think you can have 24 gateways and warp in 24 stalkers you do that twice you have no money left and suddenly you're maxed out on just a terrible army. Mm. And you cannot expect to beat an army full of BCs and ghosts with Stalkers and Archons. It just doesn't happen. Yeah, the recall over there makes me think that Hellraiser's thinking about, and the fact that he's still staying in this game at 75 supply to 189 makes me think he's thinking about trying to turn this into like a base trade. But that is going to be a very, very tough ask. I am surprised there are even still Marines on the map. I did not expect that there would be, but... Well, uh, the problem is, Kev, all of those battle cruisers can still teleport to wherever these stalkers actually start threatening. I think these stalkers are going to have a hard time winning the fight against uh, the ghosts and the planetaries, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you land an EMV on these stalkers, they have a hard time taking down a planetary. I mean, Soul still has a monstrous army, and he may still be a bit concerned because it's hard to read games, especially in a stressful mm -hmm. situation. Soul obviously thinks. He needs a victory here today to make sure he can make it into the playoffs. But Hellraiser is just completely out of steam. He's got no money in the bank, and all that he's got are a couple of stalkers. What are you going to do? Blink into BCs? It seems like that is what he wants to do. Let me just tell you, this will not end well. Half of the stalkers disappear immediately. There are a couple of Marauders with him on the ground as well. It's just 